Hey, it's taking it down on video. We are sponsored by Books. That insert ad there. No, we're not sponsored by anyone. We're a complimentary video podcast to Taking It Down, which is an audio podcast. Can be found in any podcast app or on the home side of the AlabamaTake.com. Yeah, with me again. I didn't run him off from his first appearance last week. It's Raz. One word yeah. does it. You're like Prince and Madonna and Sting, aren't you? Big supporter of books. I got him in the background. The books. Books and records. Yeah, we should do books and records. Uh, Raz, we're going to do a multi-episode arc, multi-part arc about uh, Twin Peaks as a whole. That might take a while. It. I can't promise yeah. how many episodes, but it, sh- it might take a while. Well, it's a very straightforward show. It ought to be easy to discuss. <laughs> We could knock it out in 10 minutes. We're done. Uh, we'll start this episode kind of about the original season. That first one, maybe even, maybe where we stick. But one thing about that and us is uh, I think we both recall when it hit ABC on broadcast television. April Absolutely. 8th, April 8th, 1990. In fact, this time of year sometimes will remind me of Twin Peaks every now and again. Yeah, it's got that kind of Halloween uh, feel about it. It like, does. All, going into fall sort of time period. It does, but it, I think it initially aired, um, well, no, I don't think. It aired April 8th, 1990, and that would have put us both about 14 years old, freshmen in high school, eager for anything and everything. Did you? Do you remember watching it initially? I do, because uh, we would always talk about it at school. I yep. mean, everybody talked about it and, you know, uh, acted out, you know, kind of the, the little man and, uh, <laughs> and the, the things that were going on in the show. We were doing that long before Saturday Night Live even got a hold of it. Absolutely. I, I feel like I watched something happened when I watched it. Um, I feel like I maybe even watched it the summer on reruns because maybe I didn't catch it all the first time around. It was probably one of those things where, uh, you know, like we talked in the, the last episode where, I mean, if you missed it, you had to wait around till summer to, to catch up on episodes. Something like that happened. I think the buzz of it had to circle back around to me because maybe it was over the summer. ABC knew they had a hit on their hands shortly after airing it, and that they immediately ran the first eight episodes of season one, and then they... Back, back to back, you know, and then them they, all again. And then they immediately done everything in their power to wreck the ship. <laughs> yeah, they did. Uh, they ran, they ran David Lynch off, you know. It's, oh, uh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Which is huge. That's what hinders season two and makes it, it, it only has the corniness and it doesn't have the, the Lynchian kitsch. Even though season two ended pretty strong, I, I, you know they, they they ended pretty well, but there were parts in the middle of it that was just kind of uh, all over the place. Well, Lynch came back for the like final two episodes, right? I think so. I believe that's right. He he came back and directed those, and and they'll stick with you. You know, and people, this is interesting to me. Is uh, a lot of. If you hear people talk about Twin Peaks, they talk about it in the terms of David Lynch, and mm-hmm. it's it's odd to me how Mark Frost gets left out of that a lot, and and he was such a great writer, and uh, and I, I feel like probably a lot of the story elements uh, that that made it such an interesting sort of you know crime drama type uh, type show was was heavily due to mark frost and his his writing absolutely what do you know about mark frost uh hill street blues he wrote a number of episodes of uh, hill street blues and uh, then all the uh, you know he wrote two books that were companion to the twin Mm peaks show that were kind of crucial for kind of filling in the gaps you know uh, after the show had aired that were pretty cool i can remember going to the library as a 10th grader, I suppose, and they had Laura Palmer's diary. You could buy it. Do you remember that? I do, but Wish that wasn't written it. by Mark Frost, was it? I would suspect it is, because he did, yeah. when The Return uh, come, came back several years ago, he was the one who did the books you're talking about, and they were nice companion pieces. Yeah. David Lynch's daughter wrote one of them. Okay, so maybe she wrote the Laura yeah. Palmer's diary. And you could even buy the tapes of Cooper 
talking to Diane at the time. As, I mean, what a – they knew what they had on their hands. And a, yeah. ABC fucked it up because they pushed Lynch to solve the murder. Give us give us an answer to the murder, and he didn't care about that. No, I don't think he or Mark Frost intended for that to even be the main element. That was kind of like their that was their MacGuffin for the show. That I think they wanted to tell all the other stories and the you know kind of the the interesting stories of, from the seedy underbelly of uh, rural America. It was yeah. kind of their was their main interest. Yeah. So you and I are both from this incredibly small town in Alabama. I mean, I remember going to college and people saying, I'm from a small town. Oh, yeah, where are you from? Tuscaloosa. It's like, no, that's not small. Or take your <laughs> Mobile. I'm from Fairhope. That's not quite small. You and I are from legitimately small town America. Did any of that hit home? Any of the episodes well, when when you were you know, 14, 15 watching them? Well, I mean, there was just a familiarity, you know, there was like the one diner and the one major gas station in the town and that sort of thing. And so, so many of those elements are so familiar to you. And, and, you know, the, one of the interesting things about the, you know, the you know murder of Laurel Palmer and what they tried to get into is how that single murder affected the entire community in different ways and everybody was trying to process what had happened and and i mean i think that that was very familiar to me you know mm -hmm. if there was ever a loss in a small town like where we come from you know it has an impact on on everybody around in, in different ways and, and people have to process it in different ways yeah it reverberates everyone feels it um do you remember your first reactions of watching it though and like I said, I think I had to uh, hear some buzz about it before I ended up landing on it. Well, it's like, what is it? You know, <laughs> it, it, you know, is it a is it a comedy? Is it uh, a horror? Is it uh, is it a soap opera? And it's it's kind of like it's all of those different things. And so it was such a different show. I think that was the. Uh, you know, the thing that intrigued you and then, you know, had a great soundtrack to it that was mm. just eerie mm -hmm. and uh, and very kind of drew you in. I remember Coach Jeffries, Jamie Jeffries, watched it, too, and he was the only teacher I knew that watched it. And I would just bug the hell out of him trying to pick his brain <laughs> about what he thought, because I was obsessed with solving the murder because I was I was 14, but, you know, you look back and you realize that there's so much more going on. Um, yeah, I, you and I both wanted to discuss it with anybody who would listen. And then, you know, a lot of people just came around. And years and years, people pick up this this show. It always comes up again, like another generation will pick it up and see its greatness. I, I was always uh, fascinated by the uh, the elements of the show where it was, it was very much kind of uh, – cosmic in nature so everything was driven by dreams and visions and that sort of thing and i remember like to me uh, an episode that really st stuck out was when uh cooper had uh, he had everybody list out the names of people associated with the crime and mm -hmm. took a rock and he mm -hmm. spoke the name into the rock and threw it and if it hit the jar the glass jar then maybe that had something to do with the crime and I, you know that, just things like that it was was really fascinating to me and and there was a lot of just kind of spiritualism and shamanism and and all sorts of just uh, you know there's a lot more going on here than what we know Mm -hmm. than what's being shown to us. Let the universe decide. Right. Let the, let the universe tell me who had a part in this. That was different to me at the time, too. Uh, and, yeah, you're right. That was such a good episode where Cooper was, he'd say the name, throw the rock. Such a good series, um, or such a good episode for that. And did you know a lot about David Lynch before Twin Peaks? No. Really? I, I didn't I didn't watch uh, you know I remember Elephant Man but I didn't mm -hmm. tie that to Twin P to uh, David Lynch like Same. I didn't know who David Lynch was but I had seen Elephant Man well uh, I at that point I hadn't seen like a racer head or or any mm -hmm. of his other kind of more obscure uh, pieces that aren't obscure now but uh, right. at that time they they kind of were blue velvet 
Blue Velvet. I see. I didn't. I didn't see that. I did see Elephant Man before Twin Peaks. That's the only one I can recall. I saw a large chunk of Elephant Man on broadcast TV, and it bothered me. And so I couldn't watch <laughs> yeah. the rest of it. I was so yeah. saddened by it. Uh, but I think you and I had both watched Dune, though. We just probably yes. didn't tie that to David Lynch. Maybe I don't know. Maybe we would have a little. I, I I didn't. Huh. I, I I don't I don't recall that. I do remember watching Dune and, and yeah. loving it, but uh, yeah, I, I didn't tie any of that together, really. Yeah, I would have read I read Dune in sixth grade. That I remember pretty clearly. And then I was so thrilled to go visit my brother because he lived in a he lived near Huntsville and I could rent Dune because we didn't have Dune rental at our uh, in our town. And I got to watch it finally. I got to see it. Uh but yeah, I can remember watching Dune and then seeing all these other all these actors appear in Twin Peaks again. Big Ed, it, you know, he's a he's a Fremen. Philbar. That's right. Yeah, uh, and timely another timely conversation with the Dune Part Two in theaters. So those are our initial reactions to Twin Peaks. Next time around, I imagine we'll jump into some of the specifics of season one. Hell, I might even watch an episode or two as a as a memory jog. I will tell you this, and I'll probably bring it up next episode. The is it episode the end of episode three is the still the scariest thing I've ever seen on on TV or movies. Am I right? Remind, about remind me what what happens at the end of that one. It's where you get a, a kind of a visual of some of what happened with her death, the train car. Ah, oh, yes. And yeah, that might that, even not are... be episode. It, it ended episode three, and I'm probably wrong, and I'll correct myself next time around, but it, it's haunting. Yeah, start talking about Bob a little bit. Start talking about Bob. We've got to bring it all full, full circle. I don't know how many episodes this will run. We're going to talk Twin Peaks. Uh, I don't know. Maybe we can even get Donovan in here a little because he's such a big Twin Peaks fan as well. But uh, we've used up our time, a little intro stuff. Next week we'll be off because here's the deal. We record on Sunday. Next Sunday's Easter. We'll be busy with things. But more Twin Peaks to come. Thanks to you all who watch. And, uh, man, I can hear the music now. Good stuff. Thanks, Raz. I'll see you. Later.